Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of I'm Not a Fan Unless I Have a Podcast. I'm John Hanford, and uh, this episode is the first tandem episode um, that I've done. I don't know if tandem is the... Yeah, if tandem works. That, that, that works, right? I think. Um, I've got two guests on this episode. Um, these guys are best friends in Illinois, um, and, uh, you know... This is this was a, one of the the most fun episodes that I've that I've had the pleasure of recording and, and like I, I do say that about a lot of them, um, but I, I don't know. All you guys are awesome, and I appreciate you. Um, and you know, I, I have been looking at the early stats of uh, the tenth episode that was released, and I see that people are starting to listen again, um, which. Uh, is sort of consistent with my um, with my thoughts on the development uh, on the developments of the um, you know these massive uh, protests. Um, you know, we've already heard from uh, Minneapolis that they're going to uh, disband uh, a large part of the police in favor of doing something that's more community um, community based. And you know, I, I hope that's a reform that will work. Uh, it sounds as though it's something similar has worked in Camden, New Jersey, which is a good sign. Um, and you know, ultimately like there's still a ton of work left to do, but I'm pretty thrilled that something is getting done this quickly. Um, you know, it's nice to feel hope again. It's nice to feel as though, democracy still has a fighting chance, you know? Um, and, uh, I feel like the, the sounds that my, my tongue is making against my mouth, uh, whenever I open my mouth are, are annoying. So I'm going to hydrate real quick. All right, there we are. Um, yeah, I got, I got stoned a little bit. Uh, so I'm dealing with some cotton mouth, but um, but yeah, this was a really fun episode and I'm glad that it was, I'm glad that the listenership is returning. It seems like we all have, um, you know, we're, we're getting our hope back. We're at least, you know, uh, like we, we've, we've got some fight in us and, and we can listen to some Giz talk, you know? Um, so yeah, you know, and, and like I'm not trying to be selfish, um, but like you know, I, I want this podcast to thrive, and I think everybody deserves to listen to something, um, you know, for a little bit in their day. That's you know not um, that's not just total uh, you know a bummer and bad news, um, even if it's a good. I, I don't know what I'm saying. I'm stoned. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, it seems like things are getting better, and this podcast episode is going to be one that you'll really enjoy. Um, I talk with uh, with these guys, Josh and Paul, um, and uh, yeah, we we went so all over the place in this episode. Um, we spent like maybe a third of it talking about Giz, but so much of it was just uh, was just like fucking off the walls. It was just a ton of fun. And this also came out, um, I think, the day after the first episode premiered. Or this didn't come out. This was recorded uh, a day after the first episode of this podcast came out. And, uh, yeah, so we we talked a little bit about that and um, and about uh, Chunky Shrapnel. So <laughs> we, we had a, yeah, this was a, a good time. And we'll get right to it after the theme song. Enjoy. Thank you. 
and uh yeah so so thanks for coming on um so we've got both of you guys so did you get did you both of you meet at a, at a king gives show or what 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 exactly is the story so uh our first king gives show was at the aragon ballroom on august 24th or something like that we didn't meet there yeah, we've been the 24th friends. Yeah, we've been friends for a few years uh, since junior year of high school. We actually have the same birthday too, which is pretty epic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we 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 kind of met through a love of music, not exactly King Giz. Mm -hmm. I started talking to him because he was wearing a Descendants hoodie, and he was like the only other person at school that like listened to the same kind of like punk and stuff that I did. That's how I started out was listening to a lot of like heavier stuff, like punk and metal. But actually, he's the one that kind of got me on to King Giz. Like, I had known about them, but I never really listened to them. And then we were hanging out one day, and he put on Nonagon Infinity, and I, like, really vibed with it. So it was actually kind of Josh's fault that I'm really into King Giz now. <laughs> That's fucking cool. Yeah. Yeah. Nonagon yeah. was my first album. I bought it on record. I never. I don't think I'd heard any of the tracks, but I knew a about the band and i thought like you know what might as well give it a shot I'd, I'd seen the record sitting at the store for like months so i'm like you know what i'll give it a shot bought it and i just fell in love with it immediately yeah god that, that must be nuts like uh so so you, you you bought the record without having listened to it i listened to mind fuzz or at least half a mind fuzz but mostly in the background but i ne had not listened to i'm pretty sure i hadn't listened to a single track of of Anonagon infinity Oh, that's wild. So yeah, that must have been a a hell of a journey just to is like throw this new record on all of a sudden Nonagon Infinity opens the door. It's just like, oh fuck. Dude, uh, it was so epic. Yeah, like yeah. that must have gripped you right away. It did, yeah. Cause I remember when I when I first listened to it, I was like into it and then, you know, since I really didn't have anything else by him, I listened to him very much. I kinda put it away, but then I kept hearing Robot Stop kind of playing in my head and like that's a good song. So I, I kept, you know, listening to the album more and more and it just really grew on me. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's sick. So, uh, so I, yeah, Paul, what's, what's your, I was, I was going to say, I was probably the same way. Like we had kind of like, cause like we're both really big, like music nerds just generally. So we were talking about like, like I kind of started paying attention to them, but not listening to them when Sketches came out, when Sketches of Brunswick Peace came out. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, they put out their third album and it's jazz. And people were like, I don't know about jazz. And then like, like when Polygon jazz? Wonderland came out, <laughs> when when Polygon Wonderland came out, we were like, oh shit, it's like free for anyone to do anything with that, that they want with. That's pretty cool. And then I think we were like at the mall. No, we were at DQ. When Gum we were at DQ. Yeah, when... Yeah, when Gumboot Soup dropped, we're like, holy shit, the fucking Mad Lads, they did it, the fifth album, like, on, like, the 30th or 31st of December, and then, like, I think, like, a month later is, like, when I, like, actually, like, sat down and listened to Nonagon Infinity, I was driving somewhere, and I listened to it, like, two times all the way through, and I was like, shit, why didn't I listen to these guys, like, three years beforehand, because I've been seeing them pop up, like, in different music groups on Facebook, like being discussed, and I'm like, I don't know, weird name. I'm not. I, I wouldn't really vibe with that. Like, I just never really gave him a shot until, like, Josh put him on that first time, and I was like, shit, I've been missing out for three years. Yeah, damn. I mean, so so if you guys were friends beforehand, like Josh, what the fuck were you doing? Just like not playing Giz when you're hanging out with Paul. <laughs> like, 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 like I I've I have really close. Uh, friendships, you know, with, with my friends, and n like n almost none of them uh, will like even tolerate like more than one song at a time from from King Is. That's crazy. I've seen, yeah. like a lot of my friends. Well, Paul and I both have turned a lot of our friends into Giz fans. Like we're also in a band and uh, called Harry and Houdini's, and I turned both my bassist and guitarist into Giz fans because of Nanaga Infinity and just telling him about King Giz like all the time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I think that might've had to do with, with me getting kicked out of a band uh, <laughs> a couple of years ago. <laughs> um, no, but uh, um, 
yeah, between that and just stupid shit I said when I was drunk. Um, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> anyway, it wasn't a good fit. But um, yeah, that, that, that's that's cool. So, uh, what, what kind of music do you guys play? Are you, are you also all over the map like Giz? We we're punk, horror punk, um, with some blues rock influences, but more on the heavier side. Nice. Yeah. Paul's our so, singer. I'm the drummer. Sick. Yeah. I've, I've, so yeah, you being a drummer, no wonder like you fell in love with Gibbs instantaneously. Oh yeah. I mean, I, Cavs and Eric are you know, mostly Cavs. They're crazy. Yeah. I, I mean, it, it's so I, I play guitar and I can't play drums to save my life. I, I used to not have any rhythm whatsoever uh, until like I started picking up on like all these different time signatures and King Giz, and I was like, wait, okay, so this this song is in seven eight or and then it goes to a different time signature, and basically like it just got me interested in counting, and all of a sudden like now I'm really interested in rhythm, <laughs> and it's like, uh, yeah, I, I feel like it's it's a really good way to sort of bridge that gap between uh, guitarists and drummers, which. Uh, I know a lot of drummers kind of get pissed at guitarists when they do like a count off and just totally the wrong time signature. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Paul, Paul. I don't know. I'm, 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 I'm also a drummer. I was a drummer first and like kind of got into singing later, but like, I always try to look at music from like a drumming standpoint where it's like, Oh, I really, I pay attention to drums first. And definitely, that was, like, kind of what grabbed me about Nonagon Infinity. It was like, oh, shit. Like, there's some wacky stuff, like Mr. Beat and, like, just the the entirety of the whole album just being mostly in 7-4. And that's why I kind of, I was really stubborn, and I wouldn't listen to Polygon Wanaland for a while, because it's like, I just, I can't, it doesn't make sense to me. I can't count it out. <laughs> I don't like that it's in different time <laughs> signatures. It's weird. Yeah. But, like, after just, like, listening to it, it's like, oh, okay, I get it. But, like, yeah just like from a from just like a, an instrumental standpoint or like more specifically a drumming standpoint it's just it's it's just fucking amazing what they're like what they're able to do um Cavs and eric it's just it's it's incredible and especially since there's seven of them like yeah finding seven guys yeah. to play you the same type of music or the range that they do yeah and I- stay like stay in that weird time signature of like i don't even know if, i don't know if you saw calves posted on instagram a couple days ago of like something in ableton that was in like 17 4 yeah yeah and like 15 4 like the fuck are they doing <laughs> yeah it's <laughs> like, uh, how do you count that out yeah I, I think it was like one measure of 15 4 or something it's just like why even have that measure but you, you just gotta <laughs> you gotta just gotta trust it's gonna make sense i hope it does <laughs> yeah i mean you know because like like in um, like like I don't know if you guys saw, but like a few weeks ago, I posted a video in the in the group um, uh, covering Inter- Intercell, and um, like that song's mostly seven four, and then it goes to or, or no, I guess it's six four, and then it goes uh, like um, then there's one measure of two four, and it's just like okay, well I I guess that's just because that's what that one lick is, but. Um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what one measure of fifteen four sounds like. Yeah, it's it's very wacky. Yeah, um, very wacky boys. They are. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, so I, I guess Nonning on Infinity is sort of what, um, like like that. That's sort of what got both you guys really going with Giz. Um, uh, what what are some albums that they've come out with that you have? been a pleasant surprise to you guys and you know just like surprise that you guys like it um i'd say sketches for me at first when i first listened to it i was like i just kind of you know, listened to it didn't really you know really give it a listen and then a while later i just gave it another and I'm like wow this is amazing like i can really vibe with the jazz that jazz music and just the chill like vibes they give off i mean the mild high club definitely helped with that and uh, yeah also oddments oddments was very fun um i when i first listened to it my my girlfriend got me the record um for my birthday a couple years ago or a year ago and i did not vibe with it i mean hot wax 
and Vegemite a little bit, but just a couple months ago, I really gave it a listen. And like, this album is actually really good. What 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 was wrong with me? Yeah, it, it's it's funny how that happens sometimes. Yeah, but uh, but yeah, Oven's got a bunch of uh, like really underrated songs. Uh, what what about you, Paul? Um, I'd probably say coming from like coming out of like being a fan of heavier music, definitely Infest the Rat's Nest. I think I listened to it at least four or five times the day it came out. And it's like the only thing I listened to for that whole month. He's not wrong. Like just nonstop. Whenever I was driving, like whenever I was at home, like just no matter what I was listening to it. Um, it, it really surprised me that they could come out of like, I got, oh, Fishing for Fishies just came out. I it, it really surprised me that they could just switch it up that quick and still just put out such a just sonically just phenomenal album in two different genres, like going from Fishies into Rat's Nest. It was, it was a really nice surprise. And also, um, I really, really liked Murder of the Universe, like when I went back and um, like actually listened to it, because I didn't really listen to everything that came out when it came out yeah. until I uh, like fishing for fishies. Um, but I really, really liked murder of the universe. I really liked the narration parts and I know mm-hmm. not a lot of people were fans of that, but I really like concept albums and like storytelling. Yeah. Like that's also like another reason is it's like the entirety of the Gibbs verse is a really <clears throat> interesting aspect it's, for me. It's fascinating. But like the storytelling of, just the entirety of murder really got me and it, it really made, I think that's what made me such a big fan was after going from Nonagon listening to murder. And I was like, shit, like there's more, there's more to this than just a really good album. Like it's the storytelling's amazing. Yeah. Well, and also because like you have Leah senior who has just <coughs> an amazing voice, both narrating and singing. Um, yeah. I mean, like, like I absolutely love her, her, uh, uh, solo stuff um but uh but yeah hearing her i i love how in murder of the universe it goes from you know leah senior narrating like the first the first story and then um and, and then into you know balrog and and the lord of lightning um but then uh you know all of a sudden hantayumi shows up and it's just like all right so we've moved from this you know like i i guess like like an innocent human to uh just this you know, soulless robot that wishes he had a soul. He's not a robot. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, it was, yeah. It's, cyborg, right? Yeah. But sa- yeah. Sa- same shit, you know, basically, it's uh, yeah. like, like, like it, it isn't a cyborg basically just a robot on acid? It's a like, cyborg. A cyborg. A cyborg is half human, half robot. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Then, then. All right. I'm, I'm really not. Uh, so King Giz sort of got me interested in, um, in sci-fi and, uh, and, and like my sci-fi and, and fantasy uh, frames of reference don't really go beyond King Giz either. So it's just <laughs> more of like an appreciation oh, yeah. that, that I have. Well, of like it. definitely, definitely like, I, I wouldn't say the biggest influence were like the Balrog is from Lord of the Rings. That's like just straight up a Lord of the Rings. Yeah. I, I, thing. I, so like it, it, it's, 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 it's a really good mix of like, I, I guess, like you said, like fantasy and sci-fi. Yeah. Of mm-hmm. just you can you can see their influence from like every and, aspect and just storytelling or like too. there was yeah j- like um I can't remember who but like if you go back and watch I don't know how much you watch um but like they did um what's in my bag with Amoeba Records. yeah yeah oh I love those videos and like Stu got I can't remember what the name of the book was but it was like the "Quote unquote" sequel to 2001: A Space Odyssey, mm-hmm. and like that story is pretty much the story of like the second half of Infest the Rat's Nest, like starting at like Venusian One all uh-huh. the way to Hell, like, and like that was like a year and a half before the album was even released. So it's like it's it's really interesting to see all the different kinds of things that they're pulling inspiration from, like like with Nonagon Infinity with like. Holy um, Mountain pulling inspiration from the holy mountain yeah so it, it's just it's it's really cool to see just every piece of culture that they're taking in and like being inspired by yeah well and like like they even pulled from the beach boys in hot wax 
Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, like the, the first time I heard that, I was like, why does this sound really familiar? And then, like, I think I heard the um, the Beach Boy song, like, out of, like, I don't even remember where. And I was like, oh, wait, shit, that's Hot Wax. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, it's, yeah, just the, the influence that they, they pull just from, like, anything is really... It's really interesting. Yeah. yeah. Um, it, it's, I, I mean, it's just fascinating to me because, like, no, there's no part about Hot Wax that sounds anything like it, it was influenced by the Beach Boys. <laughs> other, yeah. Just other than that one line, it's just like, what, was Stu that desperate for some kind of, you know, lyrical fill? Like, apparently so. It yeah. In their career. <laughs> And because but, of it, now the Beach Boys are part of the Gizbers. Yeah, it, it's it's. I, I, love, I love how they're just roping other people in. Just <laughs> like, like Brian Wilson has no fucking idea, probably, uh, who King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard are. But um, yeah, it, it's it's fascinating. It is. Um, yeah. But uh, so see, so, so you guys went to you you saw them um, at the Aragon. Um, the, Aragon the, the Aragon, yeah, Aragon Ballroom. Um, is that the only show that you've been to, or have you been to? Have you seen them other times? Uh, that was the only show we've been to. We were supposed to see them uh, April 29th at the Radius, which would be one of the first shows at the Radius in Chicago. It was a brand uh, new venue, and then and we should be in Colorado today watching them right now. Yeah, and yesterday yep. too. It's yesterday and today. Yeah, it's. It really sucks that all this happened, but because we were gonna, we it was, it was like a, it was gonna be like a week long trip for all of us. Yeah. But um, but yeah, I mean, it's it, at least they're rescheduling and trying to, um, like keep everyone satisfied with everything that's going on. But it's still unfortunate that it happened. Yeah, and thanks Ticketmaster for not allowing people to not allowing to give refunds. Yeah, I don't know the. Like, like that, that was, that is some major bullshit that Ticketmaster is pulling. Um, uh, ho- however, like, I know that, like, I, I, I was, like, my veins were just pumping with adrenaline when I bought tickets to, to all three marathon shows. Oh, me too. Um, and, like, I don't want to have to go through that again. So I'm glad that I still have the tickets and they're still usable. True. But, um, but yeah, I think for the vast majority of people, they've, prefer to have a refund exactly. uh at least for the time being mm-hmm. like um, it's yeah. pretty unfair that Ticketmaster does some shady stuff like that and like it, it just surprised me at the still in business yeah i mean they yeah. just have such a fucking uh stranglehold on the entire industry because like i think Ticketmaster's base i think they own or they're part of live nation they own live as, nation. As, yeah and, and a- axs so it's just like all these other oh i um, didn't even i did not know that Cause... I'm 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 pretty sure they're they're like they they're in be- either in bed with or own AXS or yeah, um, yeah. but because uh, like whenever I buy tickets on any of those three platforms, uh, I'm I'm always just like, wait, why am I still going to Ticketmaster? Like I can never remember which one it is, and all the apps sort of work the same way, just in that they're they're all kind of frustrating. Um, yeah, so I, yeah. I don't know if that's just the ticket industry in general, or if it's just Ticketmaster being a bunch of cunts. It's but, Ticketmaster. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah, man. I uh, remember when they were selling uh, tickets prior to a show being prior to a show's ticket sales being on sale to like StubHub, so ticket prices will just increase. Oh yeah, yeah, and yeah, Ticketmaster that's... still thinks there's room to increase ticket prices, which is completely obscene. Oh, completely. Um, yeah, that, that's, I mean, that's fucked up. Cause like, if, if you do the same action as an eBay seller, then you get banned from eBay that like, that's a, that's called shilling. Like, <laughs> yeah. um, you, you like that's I'm all right. So cool. Ticketmaster has an antitrust lawsuit awaiting it. And that's, that'll be fun to see how that plays out. Woo! But, um, uh, <laughs> but in any case, um, yeah, well, yeah. Like, like, have you guys ever called Ticketmaster to try and like, get a credit or, or a refund or anything no i haven't had any problems before like this i've never had a show be canceled or yeah. you know re- postponed i somehow have gotten that lucky considering the amount of shows i go to 
Like I yeah. probably try to go at least yeah. one a month or roughly. And I go to significantly less shows than Josh, but I don't think I really use Ticketmaster that much. It's usually like smaller venues for yeah. smaller shows or just like house shows, just basement shows and house shows. But yeah. well, like those are like, the most fun anyway. Hell yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but uh... um, yeah, for like, yeah, I like there's only really been like three major concerts that I've used Ticketmaster for and they've all went through. So it's never been an issue on my end. But I recognize just how scummy the whole kind of thing is because it, it really is bullshit. But oh, totally. When you have a monopoly on something, you're allowed to just do whatever the fuck you want. So even though there are laws against it. Yep. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, well, because like I, I did actually have an incident or in, in instance, an ordeal with Ticketmaster, uh, like back in 2014, I, I had tickets to see Soundgarden and Nine Inch Nails oh, wow. at, um, in, in Atlanta, since I was living in Savannah, Georgia at the time. And um, unfortunately, like, like I, I had it worked out because like at, at the time I was working with, uh, with the minor league baseball team there and, uh, and I only worked the home games. So the team was on the road th- the day of the show. So I figured, all right, I can drive three hours to Atlanta and have myself a time. And, uh, but, but then like a week before it happened, um, the, the manager pulled me aside and it was just like, Hey, we're, we're bringing you with us on the road. Um, so, uh, you know, make sure you pack your bags. And I was like, okay, well, this is really fucking cool, but I really wanted to see Soundgarden and Nine Snails. Yeah. But yeah. Like a, was that the yeah, one so, that Death Grips was supposed to be on, but then they broke up? Oh, I, Paul would I know, know, I think. Wait, wait, wait. You're, I, I'm, access, I'm accessing my memory banks. <laughs> I, I, feel like, I feel like that's true. I don't remember Soundgarden being a part of it, but I know that they were supposed to open for Nine Inch Nails. Okay, yeah, I, because I, I, I think what it was is like Soundgarden and Nine Inch Nails were going to be on tour for uh, like a month, and then Nine Inch Nails was going to go on tour, um, or like they were going to, you know, split split ways and tour separately. Um, yes. So, yes. so that that would make yeah. sense. Yeah, because I knew Death Coast broke up in 2014, or quote unquote broke up, and then they re- rejoined together later. Yeah. But um. Yeah, no. So point. So like, I, I called Ticketmaster, and and I was like, "Hey, um, here's the situation. Is there any way that I can, uh, you know, resell these tickets, or, um, or or get a refund, or a credit, or something, a voucher?" And and she was just like, "Um, no, you didn't buy the protection plan." I was just like, "Fuck you." Jesus. But um, you know, at the same time, it's just like tickets to that were eighty bucks. Oh, um, at- and. I or, or no, they, they were forty bucks each, and I I bought two of them. Oh. Um, so I, I was out eighty bucks, but I got to go on the road with a minor league baseball team, so that was fun. Yeah, uh, yeah. But, but like, dang, that's that's like, oh, here, pay a lot of money in fees, but also here's more money you have to pay if you want to get a refund. Right. Yeah. Right, yeah. Like, if you want to make sure that that you're actually guaranteed to see the the show. It's, it's like you're paying initially initially just for access to go to the show yeah and um yeah it's it's a bunch of bullshit that it it, it's you're never going to win either way if if you get the protection plan then the show's going to happen and you're going to have a fun time if you don't then you're going to get fucked it's no one wins either way yeah Yeah. picking master wins (sighs) oh yeah yeah yeah. ticket master is having a a really good time um (laughs) that that's that's one thing that I never really got about Ticketmaster is mm-hmm. like the price of ticket will be like forty dollars, and then it's like processing fees, standing fees, breathing fees, and it's like it ends up being like a hundred dollar ticket. So it's yeah, like, what what is that money going towards? Oh no, like, it, it, it's, it's 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 fucking ridiculous. Yeah, well, so like like the airline <clears throat> industry had a similar thing um, where like 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 now whenever you book a flight. Um, all the prices you see include all the fees and taxes um, because that's what, what airlines used to do um, is they would just like charge really low base values and then the rest would all be in like processing fees and just these things that are pure bullshit. Um, yeah. So finally, like there was enough of a push. But um, yeah, like, but you know, that's w- with concerts, unfortunately, there isn't 
as much uh, of like a you know an, an immediate need as far as the law is concerned. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But um, crazy. Yeah, I, I mean, and we're gonna get real dark for a second, but like if if this pandemic makes like everybody kill themselves, um, then maybe we'll see Ticketmaster, you know, get forced to uh, to start waiving fees and just making it a lump sum fee per ticket, no hidden fees. Um, I, I hope that doesn't happen, but yeah. <laughs> it's like the pandemic is going to have a pretty severe impact on people's mental health. That's, uh, and, I think, and I think, and, and, and I think it's, like the, it's going to be up to the entertainment industry to like pull people out of the funk and hopefully, you know, the powers that be recognize that. But <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, <laughs> Thank you for that it's happens. all right. Yeah. It's already affecting. I mean, we're kind of getting off the topic of Giz, but like, it's already affecting like the theater. Um, I can't think of the word now. Oh industry? my god! Like the theater industry. Yeah, like movie theater industry. Because oh I don't know yeah, if you've been paying attention. Like Trolls World Tour, the fucking Trolls World Tour movie is gonna be what kills movie theaters now because like it was like the. Like, it was like significantly more successful than the first Trolls movie was uh -huh. because they released on streaming services first for like way cheaper than like a movie ticket would be. So now it's like, oh shit, if people will pay more money to just stay at home and stream it as opposed to going to a theater where you're surrounded by a bunch of strangers, it's loud, people are eating popcorn and like all that shit. So like, it's it's really amazing that because of this pandemic, like a lot of like industries are going to change like permanently. Yeah, because of yeah, that. I mean, so, the movie Onward that was straight to streaming too. Yeah, yeah. Well, well you know, I I think it's good because the theaters have been kind of uh, like like I don't know when the last time was that I had a really good time at a theater. Like if not like like beyond just seeing the movie, like the theater experience just isn't that great anymore. Um, or like, like it hasn't been for a few years uh, or several. Um, but what, what I hope happens just with all the fallout from, you know, from movies going to streaming services is that theaters get, you know, start to get creative with like, okay, how do we get people in here? Uh, maybe, maybe don't show new movies, but like show old, have screenings of like old classics or like cult movies um and that Josh, like that'll get pre people out there josh really wants to talk about rocky horror right yeah now. you're not oh wrong. fuck yeah let's do it so i think <laughs> i say He's rocky frothing at the mouth <laughs> <laughs> rocky horror i mean that's like the first time i saw that that was probably the best experience i had in a movie theater i'm not gonna lie it was at a dollar cinema when i was going to college out in missouri at, in saint charles missouri um the theater has burned down, unfortunately, because I think some electrical wiring that caused it, whatever. Um, but yep. it was fan fucking tastic. It was insane. It was just rambunctious. It was off the wall bonkers. It was awesome. Um, yeah. But that's that's because it's an interactive movie. You get to say shit at the screen. There's people running around, you know, acting at the movie in front of the film. So I mean, that's something that could, you know, help. A reinvent the movie theater industry because yeah. i know a lot I, I, someone told me this like in japan a big thing is like what they do with rocky horse doing call outs during the film I'm not, I'm, yeah. oh yeah yeah well you know um have you guys seen the room yes love the room of course yeah. yes of so course. i went so this, my first time seeing the room i went to a screening uh, back when I was living in New York City, and there was like like it would it would just play at a few different theaters from time to time, and uh, like when I went, it was just packed. Like people were in there, and everybody had like a like a set of plastic cutlery so they could throw spoons <laughs> every time the spoon picture yeah. shows up. I literally I, mean, I went I went with another group of friends, and I'm like, guys, we have to stop the dollar store first. So we can get fucking spoons. Yep. Like we we this is something we need to do. And like people fucking throwing footballs and shit. It was. It was <laughs> it's just. No, it's an epic nobody time. Nobody had footballs. Oh, it's a great time. But like that, I, I think like between the room and Rocky Horror Picture Show, um, and um, like like there's gonna be, like they might have 
reinvented movie going without realizing it. Honestly, yeah. Like, um, like that might have to be what it is. Make it interactive. Make it like legitimately fun and just rambunctious and unpredictable. Um, I'm, I mean, at, at least like some local theaters will probably. Oh do yeah, that, I mean, it's great. Know? I mean, it's fun to go to like the 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 small, cheap local theaters for Rocky Horror because those have the best ones. Like, we have one by us that is yeah. like print like higher end. Like, it you have to order a drink. Like as a one drink minimum to go see Rocky Horror, like because that's just a theater policy. Mm-hmm. But the one I went to in Missouri, like it was like two dollars to see the movie, and that was just awesomeness. Oh, that's yeah. sick! It was great. Yeah, God, can you imagine an interactive Giz film like Junkie? <laughs> Chunky Shrapnel was badass, and that like put you sort of in the in in the shoes of being on stage. But like, what if they actually made an interactive? Film. You have to play the instruments <laughs> correctly for the film to continue. <laughs> yeah, oh my god. Or, or 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 just play continuously and like whatever comes to mind. Like once you stop playing, then you're done watching the film, and it's just like this mad, uh, terrible sounding concoction of fans playing Some instruments. I, it might be good. Smoke on the water. <laughs> Jeez. I don't know. That, that's that's just a tangent. Dude, play uh, I don't dude. know. I don't know if that has any. Yeah, but um, God, that <laughs> you see, I fucking love when when podcasts do this, just like fly off the rails, uh, like of from the from the topic at hand. Like, yeah, sure, we're talking about gives, but like, it's epic. It's cool to get to other shit Hell too. Yeah. yeah, dude, it's crazy. There's some crazy stuff out there. Love concerts, love the concert films, and this is just amazing. Yeah. So what what we. What did you guys think of uh, Chunky Shrap? I, like, 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 what? I mean, obviously, you guys loved it, but like, what? If, I mean, that's just not a like. If you didn't stop me now, but like, what? What about, what about it was just like so fucking cool to you? I'm gonna tell you, partner. I have not seen it. I was busy and I did not get a chance to watch the film. I'm, uh, I'm so sad. I'm so sorry. Oh God, have have you ever like watched the watched the video online? Um, like it's a horrible film, but it, it's it's called Kids in the Sandbox. No, but I think I know what you're talking about. Okay, it seems so, it seems familiar, but I've not. Yeah, seen yeah. It. So so it, it's it's that 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 little uh, uh short where um where like a uh, a lady inserts a vibrator into a dude's penis. Yeah, I've heard of and it. And the reaction that I had. Oh from, yeah, from, yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. So so the yeah, reaction yeah, yeah. that I, so the reaction that I had from watching that. Uh, that little clip is the same reaction I had to hearing that you, Josh, were busy and couldn't watch. <laughs> Dude, Trap work. <laughs> Gotta get this bread. <laughs> uh, I I watched it twice. I watched it on my laptop and then I watched it on my um, Xbox. on my uh, like like a- yeah, my Xbox. And it was weird because the Vimeo app on Xbox is weird, but that's whatever that's that's it's not important but like yeah i really really fucking liked it um i'm biased because i i like giz but like it was it was really interesting to see like the dynamic of them being on stage like not like like from their perspective not from a fan's perspective but like um i I listened to the, the, your first episode. You talked about the one girl that came on stage and just how like cringy and shit it was. Yeah, yeah. Like it, it reminded me a lot of. I think this was from um, the bootleg holiday from hell or whatever the the like yeah, yeah. two hour thing they have on YouTube. There was another instance where someone came on stage and they were in like some fuck off country that I don't remember, <laughs> and like the guy was on stage, and like you could tell that like Stu and Joy were just like, bruh, like get the fuck off the stage, like yeah, cool, yeah, stage dive now, please, please, like it's i I, I don't want to say they were being like mean, but like it, it it's it's interesting to see that like that kind of thing happen because when we saw them, there was like a fucking barrier, there was no way that you were, they were gonna get 10 on the feet stage. Up, basically yeah. Yeah. So yeah. It, well, I mean, e- even like from where the, where that happened, I think it was in uh, uh, Madrid. I want to yeah. say. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, like like there was still a, a huge gap between the the barrier and and the stage. So like she must have like yeah. hopped the barrier and come up the side 
or something and just like nobody stopped her like i don't know what kind of soft ass security you have in madrid <laughs> but that's like how do you well, how does that happen? When it, yeah when, if you're in america when you'll it, just when, uh, if you go try and get past the the security the barrier they'll, they'll, put, they'll probably punch you or push you back they don't they do not tolerate oh no shit. yeah i mean yeah. like 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 i like when I smoke weed at shows, like like I crouch because I don't want security to see me because like I feel like they're gonna you know like I get paranoid, I get in my own head. I'm just like no, I'm if there's gonna be somebody getting in trouble for this, it's gonna be me. And uh, <laughs> so like I I do everything I can to stand security's good side, uh, even though I don't really have yeah. to. So like just the the fucking gall it takes to get up there <laughs> and and just like bypass them. Like everything's gonna be fine. And, like, I couldn't tell what and, was going on. Like, they ushered her off after it. Um, I want I want to say this. Yeah. Like, so, like, it's one thing to get on stage and then, like, stage dive. Like, I get that. But, like, when she went for the mic, I was like, oh, this is, like, like they're planning this. Like, this is, like, the stage, like, like the promoter or something, and she's going to come out and say something. And then, like, when, like, people got up there to, like, get her off, I was like, oh, that was someone that just rushed the stage. Like, I thought it was like planned because of just how fucking like just how unnatural it seems because who goes up and like tries to steal the mic and shit. Like, yeah. It's just, it's just like, it's concert etiquette one-on-one. Don't fucking do that. Yeah. Like, and... It was, it was really, really strange. Yeah. yeah well, the, I think the worst part of it was just how like once she opened her mouth, it was just like, she, you could tell she had no idea what the fuck she was doing. She's like, Oh no. <laughs> like, like, are you ready to rock? <laughs> like yeah. like big question mark like are you ready because clearly i'm not <laughs> and, um, uh god yeah that was that was so fucking horrible but like thank god she wasn't a promoter because that probably would have been even more cringy uh, <laughs> and, and less natural um it's just like what are you stepping on eric's toes for i think he's got this uh <laughs> yeah but uh i think we're but yeah it was yeah, I, well, I think well, we'll, well, I think we'll we'll wrap this up pretty soon. But um, uh, you know, j- just like what what are some of you, you know, your guys is uh, is there anything that we haven't talked about that you guys have been thinking about? Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I have a pretty, I have about ten of their records on in my collection. That's so that's pretty epic. And they ordered Chunky Shrap, the Chunky Shrapnel. Um, nice. uh, pre-ordered the the Ado, not Ado, Flightless. I got what was it? A car. What was the what was the rare one the one I saw copper copper nitrate, copper nitrate. Yeah, I got copper one nitrate. Of those. yeah yeah I was able to... yeah I I can't keep track of variants like I'm just like either you got the album or you don't like I yeah I I'm not I a variant that's, selector that's... so I only go for the one and then that's it I just want the one that looks the coolest yeah, yeah. that's that's one thing that I've never really understood about like music and record collecting is like. Oh, look at this album that I have ten different variants of. And it's like, I I get it, but like I don't get it. Like that's a big thing with like um I'm in like a no effects group. I really like no effects, uh-huh. and there's people that have like literal like a whole bookshelf of like every variant of every record and every seven inch. And it's like, calm down. Yeah, guy. you're only you you only listen to one at a time, and they're not gonna. Sound well, that's good. like. A... But I mean, the t- t- well, that's like the people that polygon on one land. Like people, have, like, well, there's a difference though. They, yeah. I, I'd argue that there's a big difference with Polygon Wildlife. Yeah, I, yeah. That that one there was there was a lot more. Uh, like it was it was literally a free for all with uh, you know who got to press it, um, and like I did hear from some people that uh, um, that like the Fuzz Club pressing was was the, the I did best hear one. that. Um, yeah. yeah. So, so I, I that's that's the version of Poly that I own, and I don't think I'm gonna buy any other. Uh, just because, like, if I've got the best sounding one, that's good well, enough. If you get for the me. one from Flightless, you get a, an extra second of sound that just says "Hello" from Hanta. Oh no, no. Um, yeah. Uh, the Fuzz Club oh, has it. I think all. Of oh really? Have that. Oh really? Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was. It was part of just. It was part of the vinyl rip that ah. they gave out. Yeah. Yeah. But um, like, you're 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 never gonna see something like that again, really. Yeah. I think. Because, like, just everything that they did, like, the one group that did um, the NES cartridges that had every album up until then yeah. um, converted to 8-bit, like, you're never going to see yeah. something like that again. 
You're never going to see. I can't remember what company did. I really wanted to get one for mine and Josh's birthday. Um, but this one company did um, like VHSs and DVDs of the whole album with a visualizer accompanying it that they like that they had like an artist do for each song, mm-hmm. like a different visualizer. And they sold out. I can't remember Molten what the House Media was, like, did VHS. Yes. Yes. That's cool. That's what it was. But like, you're never going to see shit like that. For like, I guess you would. I mean, if they do the same concept again, where it's like just take this, this is yours. But like, you're never gonna see something like special like that from yeah. any other. Because I mean, they have so them. much material, like, and they release album after yeah. album, like, and they're on their own label. They don't even really need to worry about costs so much. Like, if if they were yeah. on, say, Warner Brothers Records, like, they gotta pay back that album before they really record an- another one, and. I mean, granted, you you can overlap. That's all music business stuff, but they they wouldn't have the freedom like they do now if they're on some major label or another label. It's good that they have their own and they can do it pretty much whatever the hell they want. Yeah, I mean, so I think like the uh, um, I think the Grateful Dead also had their own. Uh, they did. They label. had Dead Records. Uh, Grateful Dead Records. Right. Yeah, so like I think if you own your own label and you're able to run it well, um, that'll like alleviate a lot of potential. Yeah, I headaches. mean the Grateful Dead. Well, the um, Grateful Dead was yeah. technically under Warner Brothers. Frank Zappa also had Bizarre, Straight, Discreet, Barking Pumpkin, and a ton of others. Mm-hmm. Also under Warner Brothers, um, the Rolling Stones had their own. They managed a lot of that themselves, but they were under I think it was London Records. I'm uh, a music junkie. I know a lot of music history. Yeah. It's it's a gift. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dude, dude it, it's great. Like I, I, I envy that. Like I used to know everything there was to know about the Beatles. Um, you know, so like the Beatles, they had Apple Records. Yeah. But um, uh, and then George Harrison had uh, Dark yep. Horse. But um, uh, but yeah, it's it's like if you could if you can figure out the business part yourself, uh, it can do a bunch of really yeah, cool shit a lot of uh, it just gives money you and, too. And, like money problems because a lot of times back in the day if you're on a label like a major one they you wouldn't own you pretty much wouldn't own anything the record label would just i guess sell it to you or give it to you but you'd never owned it the record label could take it away at any point yeah right. and it's just it's good that the indie label is starting to take over yeah, because um, also it's, it seems pretty clear that like major labels, a lot of the time have no fuck, no fucking idea what they're doing, or what um, people want to listen to. When it right, right. I mean, like, like it just doesn't, uh, like, like they're in it basically just like, okay, can we squeeze like one or two albums out of out of this artist and then you know dispose? Exactly. There's this um, band I but, really like. Yeah. They're called Vinyl Theater. They're a synth pop band. They are on. Uh, fueled by ramen, which I think is owned by like Warner Brothers or Sony or one of those, and mm-hmm. they they've been dropped after the two albums. They have their own that they released by themselves, but of course it wasn't as big as when they were on Fueled by Ramen, which right. really sucks because they're a fantastic band. Well, I mean, if if they're able to you know figure out how to do the marketing and. <laughs> And all that stuff, and I'm I'm sure you know it'll it'll work itself out. But uh, and, you know, I also don't know that much about the business side of, of, of yeah. the industry. Only the it's bare basics. Pr- it's a tough but, industry, um, that's for sure. Gr- yeah, guerrilla marketing is definitely like it's definitely helping a lot of newer bands. Like the I I I'd be remiss if I didn't get a chance to talk about Death Grips again, but <laughs> I can't. I, I can't I can't remember what label they were signed Harvest. to originally, but based they were on Harvest. Were they on Harvest? Okay, sounds like they were on Harvest. But I think they're on Harvest, <laughs> but um, they have their own label now called Third World, and um, basically that came about by um, they re- they released um No Love Deep Web, which I think is their third, oh boy, third third album. Was, Let's say well, their third album, and they like they released it like way before they were supposed to and like they got in trouble with their labor so they're like hey fuck you we don't need you anymore so then they started their own shit and they started releasing all their shit more or less for like free 
and you could um, pay for it if you wanted to. I, I think if I remember correctly, but like they release a lot of weird shit, like for free. Like the um, their first uh, mixtape, Ex Military, they have like an accompanying album called Black Google, which is like all the stems of each instrumental track and each vocal track. And it's like 40 different tracks of like each different stem of the, um, of the original mixtape. And like, they're like, it's, it's, it's really interesting to see just like, like guerrilla marketing and stuff, like how they are branding and how they're like releasing music and um, just like as independent as they are. Like it, 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 it's 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 it reminds me a lot of King Gizzard, just like how independent and how in control of what they're doing they are. Yeah, because there's not a lot of artists that have that ability to be as first of all as popular as they are, and just able to do whatever they want to the degree that yeah. they are doing. And it's it's really cool that they get the chance to do that with Flightless. Yeah. And just with everything that Eric's doing. And, like, now they have the storefront. They have 168. Mm-hmm. And just everything that they're doing, it's really, like, a like once in a one in a million chance that they're being able to do this. And it's all working out, like, perfectly for them. Yeah. I, I'm, I, I, I have nothing else to add to that. I think they're doing a yeah. great job, too. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, um, but anyway, guys, thank you so. Oh yeah, I was gonna say. I mean, the, say? another like indie band that's also from Australia that's big, that is really. I mean, most because of a meme. Uh, the Chats, their song "Smoko." The Chats, fucking they, Smoko. I mean, all, the, all their other songs are amazing too. Um, but uh-huh. shit, I think I think they played. I think this you're right. One year, I can't be certain, but yeah, it would make yeah, sense. Yeah, but like they're huge. I mean, they're, they they toured in the U.S. last year. I'm, at, I'm angry I missed the show that they played in uh, Chicago. But uh, just missing I, everything. it's like the show that I really <laughs> want to see I miss, and it, it just sucks. <laughs> um, yeah. But th- they are – they're fantastic. They're huge. I mean, they've been – Dave Grohl and Josh Homme and Iggy Pop all have said, hey, these guys are great. And I think they've, you know, they've done a little work with them. I'm not maybe touring or something, but it's crazy. Like they're, they're literally Sick. like, I don't know, they're young guys and in their twenties and they just are writing these fun songs about Australian culture or kind of some of it is. Yeah. And they're, they're massive. They just released their first album. Uh, what was it? Iris behavior. And I mean, there's co-signed with burger records a little bit for uh, releases in America. And it's, it's fantastic. Berg Rex is another indie label. Nice. Well, I've I've got I've written down a bunch of different bands to to check out. Uh, the chats are definitely up there. Uh, Vinyl Theater, Death Grips, Descendants. Um, but Harry yeah, and Houdini's we've on covered there. a lot of ground. Yeah. Oh my God. Put Harry no, and Houdini's on there. That is our band. That's just a shame plug. Oh, right. Jesus wait, wait. So Christ. it's 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 Harry and the Houdinis. Harry or... and the Houdinis. Yes. Yes. All right. I'm just throwing a shameless plug out there. We so, have we have music on Apple Music, Spotify. Oh, please, debut please album. Do. I dated a witch on Spotify now. Debut album. I dated a witch on Spotify now. And Bandcamp. <laughs> Give us money, please. Hell yeah. <laughs> Jeez. All right. Jeez. Don't be sorry. I'm sorry. All right. <laughs> Don't don't be hey l- listen this is a fan podcast we're here to support each other at least emotionally and if somebody's got some extra cash set, spend some money on Bandcamp uh, Harry and the Houdinis so, uh, we we have no sponsors nothing is compromised uh, so you know um, yeah guys it, this has been a really fun fucking time uh, thank you so much for oh, coming thank you on. so much for having us it was awesome yeah. Of, yeah, of this course. is really experimental, and uh, I don't know that I'll I'll have multiple people on at the same time again. But if, if if anybody listening has a best friend that thinks that they'll be able to be this good at uh, you know not talking over each other and uh, and interjecting some cool shit, uh, please hit me up. And because this was a really fun podcast to do, uh, virtual so, yeah. high fives everywhere. Hell yeah, that's social distancing <laughs> in its finest. All right, guys, take All it right, easy. See ya.